emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, and welcome to a new video build series for emodels.co.uk. My channel sponsors an all round awesome dudes. Now, it's been a while since I've done an e-model series, and before you all get too excited, although you probably figured it out by the title of the video anyway, this is not going to be the big perfect grey Bandai Millennium Minimum Minimum minim, minim Falcons. And it's, not, it's not that, it's not, uh, yeah. Sorry, I know, just lost half my viewers now, never mind. Uh, yes, it's not that. It's going to be a while before I get round to that. I've got a big Master Grade Cesarbi to do and some other bits and bobs before then, so it's still going to be a ways off. But I didn't want to leave you with nothing while you're all on tenterhooks waiting for that. So I thought in the meantime, I'd do a nice little sort of stopgap series for you now. It's not going to take me long to do. It'll be a few episodes and it's not going to be too serious. What we're going to do, and I'm not going to step on anybody's toes at this point, what I'm going to build is this. It's so cute and adorable. Oh, it's the Meng Warship Builder U-Boat Type 7 and it is so utterly, utterly kawaii and adorable and cute and cheap. Oh, I just want to squeeze it by the little saddle tanks and just give it a good squidge and oh, it's just a squidgy. It's my little squidgy U-Boat build. Yes, now as you can imagine, this is not going to be a serious build in any way, shape or form. And I'm not going to be treading on Ted's toes because he's making a Type 7C. I'm making the Type 7, which in World War II was only about eight foot long. And it had a little man in here. There's only one guy, one crew member. He had his head in there and he had like his lay down here. And he maybe had a book to read at this end if he got bored. And that's not how it really worked. It's obviously just a chibi U-boat. It's so adorable. Look at that. I mean, how could you not just fall in love with that? So we're going to be making this. Now, like I said, I'm going to be, it's a bit of a silly build. I will do a proper paint job on it. I'm going to do some customization and add a little bit here and there that isn't in the kit. So what I'll do, I'll get this box open. Let's have a look at what we actually get in the kit. Okay, and starting off with the two light grey sprues. Now, one thing you might not know about this kit, it is a push fit kit. There's no glue required. Uh, although I will be using glue on this build for two reasons. One, we might have a seam line to fill down the middle of the hull. I don't know yet. We've not even started building. But also, I am going to be adding some custom things to this, some special little bits that I'm going to add myself. So I'll need to glue those on. But it, because it's a push fit kit by design, it's colour coordinated. So the first two sprues are this beautiful sky grey colour. Now this is purely internal, this one doesn't need to be any colour. These are just purely internal reinforcement parts that the hole will stick to. And so are these little pegs that hold the two sides together. Next we have the other light grey sprue, which as you can see is all the upper hull parts. Now you can see on these port and starboard sides of the hull here, the detail on these are absolutely fantastic. You've got all the free flooding vents here. You've got these millions of little rivets, all the panel lines. That's really, really nice. I mean, that is pretty much as detailed as the big Ravel 172nd. And, you know, pretty much as detailed as Ted's big 148 7C. So that is some fantastic detail. Now, I will caveat here, the free flooding vents. Yeah, just like on the big Ravel kit, they're recessed. They're not hollow. And I, I would be surprised if, I can't remember if Ted's, well, I don't even think Ted's big 148 trumpeter had, you know, hollowed out free flooding vents. I'm not going to be drilling these out like I did on my big 172nd U-boat. And that's purely because, first of all, although I do have a pin vise that's probably about small enough to get into these little vent holes, I don't have anything small enough to get into these tiny ones. I don't think I might have. But even if I can get into these with the tiny pin vise, I don't have any needle files or anything like that small enough to get in there confidently and make them nice and smooth. And what I'd rather do, instead of trying to file them with a tiny file and making a hash of it, and they look a bit rough and ready, I'd rather keep the nice crisp clean edges that you see on there and then just shade those in with a wash of some sort just to make them look like they're hollow rather than actually try and hollow them out and make a mess of it. I want to keep it looking nice and clean and crisp. So a wash in there will be absolutely fine. As well as those parts, we have the two periscopes. We have parts for the deck gun, uh, the net cutter that goes on the bow. We have the fore and aft metallic parts of the deck. As with all U-boats, the entire deck was metallic, but for most of it, it was covered in wooden slats. The fore and aft, sort of the bow and stern, were left as exposed metal. And then we have the railings that go along the side of the hull uh, and two other little parts that are bits that go on the tower. 
There is a third grey sprue, and that's just the tower, which is one single piece. It's got a nice textured deck on the top there. Uh, it has got a very slight mould line right down the middle there, but that's going to be nothing to clean up, be no problem whatsoever. And a tiny bit of flash on the railing, but again, that won't be a problem to clean up. Next up, we have the dark grey sprue, and as you can see here, for the most part, this is all lower hull stuff. So we have port and starboard lower hull, and we've got the big, you can see the big saddle tanks there. There's lots, again, lots of lovely detail on these, lots of raised panel lines and rivet detail. And underneath, there's some, fun, you can't see them there, but there's some fantastic little vents, loads and loads of them. This is packed full of detail, and they're such a tiny kit, I'm really quite impressed by the moulding. Uh, we also have more parts for the deck gun and the aft tower gun. The central part of the keel that goes down the middle, that's what it sits on. And uh, we've also got parts for the bow plane and the rudders, the screws, and this part which is the central decking. Now this is obviously dark grey on here, uh, and we'll explain about the decking when we come to paint it, but we're not going to be painting it dark grey, we're going to use a number of different colours on this. And as I say, when I get to this bit, I'll explain why. Next we have this lovely little display base, which as you can see is designed to look a bit like a dry dock. So if the U-boat was in dry dock it would be resting on wooden beams, that's kind of what they reproduced here. Don't know how we'll paint that yet, we'll, we'll think about that. It's also got this little plaque here that you're going to put a sticker on. Now with this being a warship builder kit, it's aimed at the younger builder, so you're not going to get water slides. We've got self-adhesive stickers, but that's fine, we're only going to use three of them. Uh, two for the tower, so two, those two, those two, or those two, whichever you want to use. Uh, and then one of these two, these just go on the base, you could do in English or Chinese, whichever you prefer. So they look pretty good, we'll have some fun with those. Once they're covered in varnishes, they'll be absolutely fine. Of course, it's not a model kit without destructions, and typical to men kits, they're really nice. Nice, shiny, nicely printed, all in colour, and dead straightforward, dead clear. It's like building Lego almost. Not a complicated build, won't take me long, uh, and there are good colour call-outs at the back here. Now, if I remember rightly, I think it tends to point you towards AK Interactive colours. I could be wrong, I read it somewhere on here. But of course, you can use any colours you want, it's just for fun. So yep, a good, nice little instruction book. Last but by no means least is this little pile of treats that I've taken from my spares box. Uh, some from a previous U-boat build and some just other random things. Now, I was hoping to use my water slides of the Laughing Sawfish. These are from the 172nd build I did and I have a set where you get a blue, black and green Laughing Sawfish, two of each. There was some debate in real life uh, amongst historical enthusiasts as to whether the Laughing Sawfish was green or black. There's lots of debate either way, but I happen to have uh, the green ones left. Unfortunately, I've only got one, so it's no use to me at all, so I can't use it. Sadness. I also have a selection of printed, screen printed cloth flags. Uh, now, obviously, we don't need the American one, we can get rid of that, and that one, we don't need that. But we do have this collection of Kriegsmarine flags of different sizes. Now, I'm probably going to use this one, and it's kind of tricky to do these and get these to work, but it's just double sided print. And I'm going to try and use this, because there's no flag in this kit, obviously, but I'm going to try and use this and set it up so it can actually have a proper flag. It'll be completely out of scale, but that's kind of the fun, because this whole thing is out of scale. It's an egg plane under the sea. I also have this sheet of tonnage pennants. You can see here, these are from the Ravel kit, and they're just on paper. And these are what would be displayed as it came back into port, or maybe even out at sea, just to show tonnage of ships that they'd sunk while they were out and about. Uh, now I'm, I might use these, these are just paper, they're quite easy to use, but it depends on me doing the, the steel cables, but I'm going to try and see if we can get them in. Again, they'll be out of scale, but that just makes it more fun. And lastly, we have this little collection of plastic bits, which I'm going to use to, it sounds ridiculous to say, make it more accurate because it's like an egg plane submarine, it's just it's nonsense. But there are certain things missing. For example, the captain's flagpole. There's no flagpole on the back of the of the tower, so we need to add that. Uh, also, I'm going to try and use some Easy Line, which I have here, to do. I say the rigging isn't the right word. It's the antenna cables that run the length of the U-boat. I'm going to see if I can get that on there. And we need to include things like isolators and the other support pieces that sort of kept the cabling in place. So I've got these bits of plastic and hopefully we're going to be able to use these. Now if you want to know what these are, these are from a really terrible Airfix 172nd scale JU-52. They're awful kit but I've got it spares. Uh, these parts are from the Trumpeter 135th, if I can pick it up, 135th Striker. Uh, and these tan colour parts are from a Tamiya 135th Panzer IV. 
a good old standby for kit bash parts a panzer 4 is a fantastic kit just buy the kit to have all the parts i've used panzer 4 parts from this specific kit on many builds over the last five or six years land speed there's all kinds of things bits everywhere so yeah do keep all your old kits when you finish a build and you finish a kit don't just throw the sprues away if there's parts on the sprue either snip them off and put them in a box or if there's loads left on the sprue just keep the whole sprue you'd be surprised sometimes you might start a kit and never finish it just put the sprues in a sprues box and you have lots of little bits these things here are actually the supports and struts that hold the floats in place on the ju52 because you could build it as a float plane and these will make great flagpoles so there you go so that's all the extra bits and bobs before we get started let's quickly go through the tools and bits of kit that we're going to need now with this build it's only going to be a quick simple build i'm going to as always assume that you're a beginner that you're learning you're just starting out this is a nice silly little fun kit aimed at younger builders so i'm going to assume you're a bit of a beginner so if you do know what you're doing around the model kit if you know your way around a, a pair of nippers or a paintbrush apologies do stick with it i'm going to show some advanced techniques as well but i'm going to start right at the beginning so tools wise first thing you're going to need is a pair of nippers or also known as side cutters these are devices for cutting the bits off the sprue you don't want to just pull them off and twist them off because that will damage the part on the sprue you want to get them off with a pair of nippers these are designed to cut that way and we'll show you that in a bit so make sure you've got a good pair quality pair of nippers i do recommend the tamiya ones they're very good but there are others available next up is a good knife of some sort now you can use a hobby knife or a model making knife uh, you can use a box cutter as our american colonial cousins would call it but i've got here a swan morton surgical blade it's basically the handle is one piece and the blade is replaceable what you want to do whenever you start a project is replace the blade with a fresh one i've got tons of these sitting around you pop the blade out you want to replace the blade because when you're cutting away at the plastic say removing little nubs from where you've taken it off the sprue you don't want to be gouging the plastic out and if it's an old dull blade you're going to make a mess so every time you start a new project put a nice fresh blade on and remember at all times knife safety if you're a younger builder get a grown-up to do this bit for you but if you're you know old enough just be very careful with your knife. I'm known as Captain Stabberty and I've got the scars to prove it. Next up, we have a selection of items for filing and sanding, just for helping clean up all the little nub marks left from when you take pieces off the sprue. I've got a selection here. I've got an old metal file that I've had from a million years that I got from an old DIY store. It's kind of smoothed down a bit, but I found it perfect for filing. Not everybody likes to use metal files. I also have a selection of sanding sponges. Uh, these are the Ultimate Modeling Products one. They look a bit old and battered, and they are, but I like to use these till they're no use anymore. I don't just use them once and throw them away. They last you for a long time and they still do their job. Uh, and you can, of course, if you want to, you use sandpaper you don't have to use sponges or a file it's just something to smooth down the plastic and you want to get a nice range from you know very rough to a little bit less rough to kind of a finishing it's not polishing or buffing but it's kind of a, a finishing smoothing off sponge anything from rough to smooth so a good selection of sandpaper sanding sticks or files just to clean everything up Next up is a seam removal tool or a mold line removal tool. Different types of this are available. I've got two here. I've got one that's just a, a bit of a blade and one that's the handle. This is just designed for taking the mold lines and mold release lines off the model and smoothing off details. Many different types are available. Some are just little pieces of metal that you can scrape away. But do have a look at getting yourself some of these. They are really handy. You can just use, if you want to, your hobby knife or craft knife to scrape away any mold lines or seam lines it just can get a bit messy it can scrape around on the surface and these are solid thick metal they don't bend and they're really good just for smoothing down bits of plastic so see if you can get yourself something like this there are many many ones available next up on this project i'm going to try and recreate the antenna wire that goes along the top of the hull and now for this i'm going to use basically rubber thread this is called easy line this is really hard to get hold of but in the e-model store there is the ammo by mig rigging it's basically the same stuff it's rubber it's not thread it's not string it's rubber and it can stretch if i take this bit here you probably can't even see this on camera but i can stretch that massively it stretches up to 700 percent its length uh, and this is brilliant for doing telegraph wires rigging on ships it's got antenna wires on u-boats antenna wires on aircraft it's quite an old modeler's trick instead of using cotton thread which goes all fuzzy and horrible and can be really thick this stuff if you can even see it is like hair thin and like i say on the e-model store you've got the ammo by mig stuff it's brilliant get yourself some of that 
Last up, we have the glues. It wouldn't be a model build without glue. And now we have a selection here. This one is Tamiya Extra Thin. This is my absolute go-to favorite. It's water thin. It works by capillary action. We'll explain that as we go along. And it's a welding cement. It welds the two pieces of plastic together to make a really strong joint. Next up, we have regular Tamiya cement, which I call Tamiya Fat. It's a bit like this. It's just thick and gloopy, and it's designed for bigger pieces to stick together. We might find a use for this. We might not, but it's, it's very similar to this. It's a polystyrene cement. This is a bit like your Revell Contactor or your Humbrol Poly, something like that. It's a thick, gloopy cement. Sprue goo, we might use, we might not. If we do, I'll explain what it is, but it's basically a homemade concoction for filling gaps. It's not just a glue. And last of all, we have two CA or cyanoacrylate glues, what you would know as super glue. Uh, I've got the thin and thick, and I've got two different ones here, just in case I need one rather than the other. And what these are going to be used for, this is when we get to doing the antenna wires. It's made of rubber, if you remember that stretchy stuff, it's made of rubber, and it only sticks to plastic with something like super glue. Well, this just dissolves plastic, it doesn't affect the rubber. So we've got this for that. So anyway, let's get on with this now. That's enough talking. Let's do some building. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, rather obviously, is get the parts off the sprues. Now, you want to follow the instructions here. It's tempting to just get all the parts off the sprue at the same time. And with this kit, there's not a lot of parts, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. But I would say, just stick to the instructions and go in order. Take the parts as you need them. Uh, but how to get parts off the sprues? Get yourself your nippers, your side cutters, whatever they're called. Now, it is tempting to go in and just go, yay, snip, 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 and get the part out. It's not advised. I've got some very, very expensive, very nice nippers here that I can put right against the plastic and do that, and it will cut and leave a nice clean cut. Yours might not do that. Depending on which nippers you've got, they can actually mangle the plastic a bit. So because you don't know, what I always say is when you're cutting a piece off the sprue, just to be safe, leave a little tiny amount on the piece itself. Don't go right to the edge of the plastic. Just go close. You can see there, there's a little tiny bit of plastic left. Okay, the next step is we need to deal with these little nubs. Now, like I said, I've got some very nice, very expensive nippers, which means I can just go in and snip like that and get rid of most of it. However, you might not have those nippers, so don't make that assumption. What you want to do is this. Now, if you're a very young builder, this is where you might have to get an adult to give you a hand. If you're not a very young builder, this is where you might have to not be like me and be an idiot. Uh, we're going to use the knife, first of all, to shave down these little nubs to as small as possible. The idea is to get rid of these nubs but not to gouge into the plastic. Now, I'm gonna do it towards myself because I've been doing this for 40 years and I've got a method, so I don't stab myself very often. If you're starting out or if you're not sure, or if you can, always cut away from yourself. Now, I can't actually do it this way, I'm useless. I can't cut away from myself. So I have to cut towards myself, but it's a bad idea if you're a bit clumsy like me. I do occasionally ding myself, just not very often. If you have to cut towards yourself, use some kind of brace, brace your thumbs together so you can't slip and oh, gouge yourself. I can't go beyond my thumb there. So if I slip, my thumb's only going that far. What you want to do is you want to get the blade, uh, you want to get it flat on the surface. Now this is an angled surface, it's actually got a chamfer like that, so I need to make sure it's f it's not an angle, it's flat to the surface, and if the surface is angled, I need to make sure it's flat. And what I want to do is very, very gently, with no pressure, I want to shave away at the nub. Now I'm not going right to the bottom of the nub and cutting it out. If you do that, what you risk doing is going into the plastic and doing a big gouge like that. You want to start from the top of the nub and go down a little bit and just gently shave it away little by little till it's virtually flat. So the next step, we need to get rid of what's left. This is where I go in with my files and sanding sticks. So it's almost, I almost can't touch it. So what I'm gonna do is just clean up. I don't know if you can see it on camera, there's a little bit of roughness. I'm gonna very gently go in my file first of all and just smooth that down. Now this is to get rid of any bits that are sticking up. I'm putting no pressure on here at all. I'm parallel to the edge here. So it's again, slightly angled because it's not a, it's not 90 degree, it's like an angle. It's like, because the deck is kind of like that. Very gentle. I'm just going in one direction at all times. I'm not going backwards and forwards. If you go backwards and forwards, you'll grind it and make a rough mess. This first bit of sanding or filing is just to get rid of any little sticky up bits and make it smooth. The next three steps, or the next two steps, are just to get rid of any roughness and sanding marks put in by the file. So what I do first of all, remember I've got various different sanding sticks. I've got a rough one and a reasonably smooth one. 
I'm going to go in with the rough one first, and again, no pressure. The point here is to just gently remove the marks that that file put in. Now, I'm not trying to sand anything flat. We've already removed the nub. The point here is to remove the marks left by the file. So that's that. And then I'm going in with an even smoother stick. This is my sort of finishing sponge. And on this one, because it's very, very smooth, I can just quickly do that. I can go backwards and forwards on this one. Again, I'm not actually sanding anything flat. I'm using no pressure and I'm just softening all the little scratches that this put in. And in this in turn, remember, softened all the little scratches that that put in. And because it's finer, it's just smoothing everything away. And that now is as smooth as a baby's bottom. There's nothing there at all. There's no visible nub. And if you hold it up to the light, it doesn't look scritchy scratchy. Now, if you weren't painting this, you'd then go in with a polishing stick to get that even smoother, to make it look like the rest of the shiny plastic. But we are painting this, so it doesn't matter. But that's what you're doing. But that's that. So I need to go around and get this part done now. And I'll go through and I'll get all, I'm gonna actually get all the parts off the sprue to start with, because I need to show you the building. But when you're building this, just go through part by part, take each part off as you need it and get it cleaned up. So I'll go and get the rest of this cleaned up and I'll go and do the rest of the parts in the kit and then we'll crack on with the next bit. Okay, as you're going along sanding and cleaning up, you also need to keep your eye out for any mold lines. You can see this little sort of line that goes right down the middle here. This is a mold line. It's created when the two halves of the mold are pushed together and the plastic is injected. You sometimes get a little bit of a squidge coming out between the two molds. Now, somehow they've got a line here and there's a bit here, but there's nothing down the middle here, which is pretty good, actually. I'm quite impressed with that. But it's only tiny, but you need to keep your eyes open. How are we going to get rid of this? Dead easy. Remember I said before about having a mold line removal tool? All you need to do is just very gently scrape along it. I'm putting on no pressure here. That should get rid of most of it. And then once you've done that, come in with your sort of finishing sanding sponge and give it a very light sand. Done mold line gone now you will find other ones around the kit especially on things like anything tubular like the periscopes anything where it's a tube or a stick of some sort there might be a mold line down the middle so just as you go along keep your eye open for mold lines and as you see them just get rid of them okay now you'll notice i've jumped ahead a little bit don't panic don't panic i've only followed the instruction manual so to get to this point you just need to follow the instructions it's dead easy only a few bits to put together however you might be wondering why i've stopped here well i've made a decision i don't remember earlier on in the episode if i said i was going to be doing some airbrush painting i've now decided i'm not what i came to realize was two things first of all this is supposed to be a silly fun build now ted already has the proper hardcore u-boat build down pat he's got that he's working on the painting and weathering at the minute so he's got you covered on that side if you're a proper hardcore builder this is supposed to be a silly fun build so we're going to make it a silly fun build we're going to stick to brush painting now i will use the airbrush for a couple of things probably i will use it for primer and i might use it for the matte varnish but all the things that i use the airbrush for are equally usable with a rattle can so if you don't have an airbrush at all don't panic you can still do what i'm doing here the other reason i've got to the decision of doing it brush painting it's the antenna wire i need to do the antenna wire and doing it while there's everything still in sub assemblies and then having to assemble stuff later it's not going to work because with an with the antenna wire if i go ahead and do sub assemblies and get everything painted and then start gluing the antenna wire on it's very easy to me to get a little drop of super glue somewhere on the model that will mess up the paint job and be a pain in the bum so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to get the whole thing assembled with the antenna wire on there then i can start priming it and painting it and it should be fine now if you are going to be airbrushing you can get to this point and then you can start your painting i've got these laid out like this because this is the point i was going to get to before starting the airbrushing and I designed it so I didn't have to do any masking so I paint the upper hull the upper hull color I paint the lower hull and the keel the lower hull color I paint the deck the deck base color and I've got the tower the deck gun and the net cutter there again which will all be upper hull color more or less so what you could do is you could assemble the whole thing and mask it all off to get the different parts of the hull different colors or you could keep it to these sub assemblies upper hull the keel the lower hull the deck and the sort of the superstructure that goes on the top of the deck now obviously the downside to this is if you then got all this painted up and then assembled this you'd have the seam line down the middle of the lower hull that's an easy fix and we'll show you doing that anyway when we glue all this together in a moment so if you are going to do airbrushy airbrushy 
I recommend coming to this point and having this set up and then start your painting. If you're doing like me though, if you're gonna do a brush paint, then we're gonna carry on. So we're gonna get the rest of the assembly done. If you notice here, I've got the bow planes and the rudder on there. These are very tricky to get on without breaking them. This part in particular, I actually popped off the little peg on the bow plane on both sides because it's got a peg here and a peg there that go into the into this superstructure and the hull there. Now, they are easy to break, but they do still go in place, but I'm gonna to have to glue those. So if you are doing a proper painty painty build, I do recommend getting these on and we'll glue them in place just to fix everything. Cause there are a couple of little pegs that snapped off, but these are very delicate. Make sure this bit fits flush because it doesn't really show it clearly in the instructions and it doesn't fit very easily, but make sure this bit fits flush with the hull. That's the important part. This bit can come out in order to make that go flush. So if you push this in and that bit won't go in all the way, just pull that out a bit and push that bit down and keep going until it goes all the way in flush. Same with that one, this needs to be flush on there. So I'll get some glue and we'll finish the building ready for the painting. Okay, so the first step to do this is we're gonna do some modifications. If you remember, I said we're gonna do some mods to this kit. Now I'm doing it now because I've got the upper hull here and it's nice and stable so I can do what I need to do, which is, drill some holes yes I've got my pin vise here and I can't tell you what size bit this is it's just one of the smallest ones I've got and what we need to do is drill a couple of holes at the stern here for the antenna cables to go into so we're just going to drill a couple of holes and all we're going to do is take our pin vise and we're going to do some little holes now I've done a little pilot mark there already just so I know roughly where I'm going to be doing it and apologies you can't really see this because it's kind of in the way I'm going to rest my hand here I'm going to go gently because I don't want to break the drill bit. The downside of these tiny little drill bits is they're very delicate. So we're just gonna push down gently, start working our way through. It's not exciting to watch, I'm afraid. Okay, that's those holes drilled. Now I did have to go ahead and take this off because I realized it's taking so long because there's there's a peg and socket there that was trying to drill through as well. So I've taken this off. I've drilled a bigger hole through those just in case I need to get the antenna wire threaded through there. So I've got two holes ready. And then I drilled these holes and made sure they were nice and clean. So that's done. I'm gonna leave this off just in case I decide to start the antenna wire threading from this end and work my way back along the U-boat. So I'm not gonna glue that onto the hole yet. And okay, so let's crack on with the rest of the assembly. We have the deck, which is gonna go on, and that's quite simple. Big hole here for the deck gun. That's the bit where the tower goes. So this just literally slots in like that. It's quite a tight fit, so don't be too gentle with it. But yes, as we're gonna be brush painting this, it's gonna do us some nice favors. Now there is a little gap around the edge here where it kind of goes together. That's fine, we can live with that. That'll aid us in our brushing action so that's going to look quite nice we're not going to put the tower on yet we're going to assemble the halves of the hull now you need to put the keel in first which is i shall consult the leg end see which way around the hull goes the hull goes big end at the butt big end is butt end so it goes in this way slides in like that we then attach that to to thull uh, that is that way might not stay in place but hey so these little plusy things here these go into the actual tubes on the inside of the hull it's gonna be a very tight fit well that bit's gonna fall off anyway yes yeah, so this is gonna be a very very squeezy tight fit be careful of your bow planes and other bits and bobs because they are going to be a easily snapped off if you go a bit wrong and then the hard part of the hull with these pegs in there to lock it all together just goes on like this oops well not like that like this again watch where you put your hands don't want to snap these off even on my 170 second scale 7c u-boat i snapped these off enough times that was fun so watch out for your bow planes and your rudders Watch out for that little nub there that I didn't take off. I'll have to go and correct that in a second. Let me go and do that now. Haha, <laughs> turns out it wasn't a nub that I'd left on. It was a little tiny bit of flash that was somehow 
left over on a, a mold release dimple that I hadn't spotted. So it's still my own fault, basically. So make sure the bottom of the hole is spanged on there nice and firmly. That is lovely jubbly. So you can see uh, the seam line on the lower hole is not massive. We've got a little bit here. I'll see if I can do it without going out of focus. Got a little bit at the bow here. We've got a tiny bit at the stern and there's a little tiny gap on the grey hull as well, but nothing major. So that is that done. Now I'm going to leave this piece of decking off and I'm going to leave the, the uh, net cutter off just so I don't break them. I'm not going to attach the deck gun because we're going to leave that off till final assembly. And for the tower, I've made a decision to leave all these parts on again purely because the uh, the antenna wire and we might do some rigging for the tonnage pennants that's going to have to be attached to these so these need to be on there anyway and again like before I don't want to be doing super glue when the thing's painted so we're just going to have to go ahead and glue these on and get everything assembled so we're going to put this part on and this just quite simply slides down over there like that now you could leave that bit off completely and paint it if you're brush painting it but again I need to figure out where the antenna wires are going so I'm going to take those parts off for now so I can push this thing down. I can't take the gun off because that's quite delicate. Be careful when you put the, the, the gun on the back, the rear deck gun. Be careful when you're pushing this down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to glue are all these little sticky out bits that are very delicate. The, the rudders here and the bow planes are all technically movable. But like I said before, I broke some of the little pegs so we need to just glue them in place and make sure they are firmly fit so the bow planes are fairly static because you push these pieces in they're kind of jammed in place so we're going to take some Tamiya extra thin and all we're going to do is just touch it to here and touch it to the other side where the two points would be there's basically a little peg on either end where I'm gluing now that would attach to this piece of fluting here however some of those have snapped off so yeah they're just in by friction i'm going to put a little bit here where this piece of framework goes in this is under a lot of stress and tension this piece here so it's unlikely to pop out but just to be safe i'm going to glue it in place there's no point in taking any chances and same with this part here it's kind of under a lot of tension so i may as well glue it in now the beauty of the tamiya extra thin like I said before, it's a welding cement. It melts the plastic together. So that it gives you a very, very strong bond. But it's also very, very thin, which means uh, that you can, instead of like splopping glue everywhere, you can just touch it to an edge and it will suck down into the gap through capillary action. I need to push this in a bit because this isn't sitting properly flush. These are quite a tight fit, so you have to fight with these a little bit. Don't seem to want to go in all the way. Let me go and fix that first. Okay, turns out it wasn't a nub left over or something else that I'd done wrong. It was just that that part really didn't fit very well at all. So I've had to glue it in and tape it down just to hold it for a while. It might still have a bit of a little gap, but I can live with that. So we'll get that glued on there again, just using the capillary action of the glue. I'm also going to glue the screw in place because we can paint that no problem. When you're doing things like this and you're planning how much you're going to assemble, just keep a, a sort of in mind how you're going to paint things. Can you get to everything to paint it? Things like that. Keep that in mind when you're deciding what to glue together and what not which is why we had that sort of partial assembled bit earlier on. When I was saying, if you're gonna airbrush it, you need to keep those parts separate. So here we're gonna put some glue on the little attachment pegs. Okay, just a touch, you don't need a lot. You don't need to drown this thing in glue. A bit there. And we're gonna put some glue down the middle here. So now we're going to clamp that and hold that together. Now, unfortunately, because of the size of the, this thing, it's not easy to actually clamp anything. 
clamping the bits together is not actually that easy because <laughs> it's so small but it is adorable so i'm gonna leave this to dry for about 20 minutes five well maybe five or ten minutes then we'll get the stern and the bow glued up and clamped and then move on so back in a moment okay so that's all those bits glued in place quite nicely next we just have to do something about these little gaps in the hole and really it's just the at the bow here it's just this little gap here uh, this end there's not much we can do here really because there's no way for me to clamp this it's just not possible for me to clamp that at all but we can do something later on i can do a bit of glue in there so we'll put a little bit of glue in here first this end now i can't clamp it but i can hold it for a moment and it'll have some effect so i'll just sit here for five minutes okay now at the other end on the bow we've just got these gaps here so what we need to do first of all anyway is just get some glue into the relevant place again we're just going to touch it to the gap let it use the wonders of capillary action we're going to put a little bit around here because we want to get this part of the bow as well we want to get some here now this is to me a masking tape but the beauty of this is it will not the glue will have any effect on it because the glue melts plastic it doesn't do anything to paper so i can get that all in there really just about trying to clamp it as best you can whether it's tape or clamps themselves it's not going to be perfect but like i say we can there's a way to fix this later on if we do any gaps that are left over also means that's got a bit more grip to it so i'm going to leave that for 20 minutes again just to let that all set okay so that's those parts glued nicely we still need to fill them in a little bit with some sprue goo but i'll show you that in a moment before we do that i'm going to mount this on the base just because it means it's easier to handle and better for painting then now here's the base it looks like a dry dock it's got this little sort of plank effect i like that the problem is most people when they get this will go bing there you go done mounted that's really boring i'm going to do this i'm going to put it at a jaunty angle why because it's just why not you could put it straight and then the base is at a funny angle or you can put it base straight and then your boat is at a funny angle and you can see more of it rather than just the side you can see it. it's just more fun it's more interesting i'm doing it anyway shut up i have taken a little moment to sand well file scratch up a little bit this part of the keel with a file because you're not going to see that and what we're going to use for this is not tamir extra thin but the tamir fat cement as well as the extra thin the tamir fat cement is more like a gel now the reason i'm doing this i could just use extra thin uh, an extra thin will melt the plastic together and give it a super strong bond but what i'm going to do is use the fat cement first purely to give it something to stick now the fat cement melts the plastic a little bit as well but it also works by a little bit of stickiness so when i'm mounting say miniatures to a base i use the fat cement just to give it some stick until i apply the extra thin so what we're going to do we're going to get some of the fat cement on here fat cement works well on big flat surfaces which i'm why i'm more keen to do it here we're going to place this on the base we're going to get that where we want it it's not a massive surface area you see so i'm going to slide it a little bit just to give it some extra grippy sticky push it down i just want to get that little bit of adhesion first off make sure i'm still pushing it down but i'm looking around making sure it looks okay yeah looking pretty good okay make sure that is the right side so all i need to do now is while that's doing its sticky sticky goodness is going with the extra thins and i can start brushing this quite liberally now between the keel and the base now it's going to pull it apart a little bit because it will reactivate the cement so you've got to take your time with this but this will do the extra melt and weld okay now for some really fiddly stuff now this isn't the really 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 fiddly stuff that's the antenna wire this is just the little bits and bobs we need to stick on so uh, we have a few bits now if you remember i've got some custom pieces as well but first we're going to put the net cutter on so that's nice and easy that just slots in there like that 
and then what we can do is take a little touch of glue and just touch that to where it joins there we go and one little bit there now i'm doing all this before i do any filling of the seam around the front we'll get all these bits on first so that is now in net cutter done next we have uh you see on here on this back plate here we have this little sticky uppy bit now that's a, one of my pan to me a 135th panzer four parts that i've cut and trimmed and uh, what happens is the antenna wire comes across it's normally like a little tripod thing it sticks on that and then goes down to the back i haven't got a little tripod thing and it's really too small so i've just got this little sort of angle here it's part of a brace or a bracket from a panzer four but i've just trimmed it down so i've got another one to go so all we're going to do is first of all glue this to the device so i've got some wire to me actually now this probably will be out of focus because it's tiny so i do apologize a little touch of glue on that place it delicately on the surface i only want a little touch of the glue there to start with just to get it to stick a little bit because then what i can do is come in with the glue and just touch it touch it now i can wiggle that around a little bit if i need to just to get to line up now i'm trying to get it sort of to line up roughly with with the hole there so that's about right it's lined up with the other one quite nicely that'll do it nicely so i'll give it a little push there we go i was a little bit off center there that's looking pretty good so there we go now i'm not being 100 percent accurate here obviously because it is just a silly fun build so don't overthink it we'll put that to one side next up we have uh, when i come to do the antenna wire the antenna wire goes around the top of the tower and through a little on the real thing it goes through a little sort of loop a little hole i haven't got that so i've taken a couple of pieces of again the tamir 135th panzer IV. i've trimmed them down from whatever they were before i can't remember little flangey things uh, and i have uh, decided to make them into the relevant parts so i've trimmed them down i've got one here and this should fit quite nicely on there or is it that side i'm not sure hang on this is where there may be a lot of jump cuts in this section because there'll be lots of fiddling and swearing and delicate movements so don't be surprised if there are many many jump cuts here now that one other side fits a bit better i think so we'll take that so this is purely just adding a little flange effectively so that i've got something that the antenna wire can loop through so we'll just delicately put that there as best we can now the other one went on like a dream which guarantees this one will just fall off you can see it coming prop that up and apologies if any of this goes out of shot in case that needs to come down just a touch It'll be very gentle here because i'm basically just attaching two edges together i've got no nubs or anchor points to use i'm just hoping that it'll stay in place with the sticky of the glue long enough for me to wiggle it around a bit and get it nice and straight that's looking pretty good again it's not perfect if this was a real you know if this was ted's 148 scale u-boat or if i was doing uh, the Ravel 172nd scale which are both obviously fantastic kits um then i wouldn't be using random cut off bits of a panzer IV that aren't looking quite accurate and realistic but this is just a silly fun build i'm going to push it back a little bit silly fun build with only the very slightest nod to reality so i'll just get that lined up make sure it's horizontal ish there we go so what will happen is the cable will come from from the uh net cutter here it'll go to an isolator like a y-shaped isolator reality we'll get one on either side we'll go through this loop and then around the little basket at the back there and it'll go down to the back so this is just giving me something to loop the cable through so i need to make sure these are glued on really nicely and firmly before i go anywhere near them push that front bit down a bit put my finger under there there we go just 
little bit raised up a little bit of nudging the beauty of this extra thin is you can it does give you a little bit of play time for a while so you can adjust as you go there we go so push it down a little bit make it horizontal Get some glue underneath because I didn't have any before there we go I just need to leave that the hell alone now for like an hour <laughs> If ever you've got like a small piece on a model, like a delicate antenna or something that snaps, extra thin is your best friend in this situation. Next up, I want to add a flagpole. And this is just a small piece of the struts from the horrible, horrible, horrible Airfix 170 second uh, JU-52 that comes with the floats. It's a terrible kit. I don't recommend it, but it, these little sticky up bits. Now this hopefully will be long enough for the flags that I've got. So again, I'm just gonna get a little bit of glue on the flagpole. I've given it a kind of flat side, a little bit of a flat side, so I'll get some more glue on there. I've tried to give it a bit of a flat side anyway. And all we'll do now is, same as we've just done with that little triangular piece, we're just gonna spong it on there like that. Give it a second to take. Do it off camera, of course, that's always the best thing to do. I can push that on. There we go. Now I can reinforce that with a bit more glue. I've got to be careful here because whenever you use super extra thin, super extra thin? No, just extra thin. Super extra thin. Whenever you use extra thin, you get a piece nicely stuck in place and then you put more extra thin on and it reactivates everything and everything falls off. So do be careful. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. That went on a lot easier than I thought. So that is now in place and that's perfectly lined up and looks pretty spanky. So I shall leave that alone. Even though I'm now tempted to put more glue on it because I'm just a fiddler and I can't resist. But you see why I wanted to glue this to the base before I did those parts? Because the base gives me something to hold on to and I can leave this up right now. So that's the flagpole on. We've got the two little, whatever you call those bits for the antenna wire. The net cutter is on. We've got these two pieces glued on the back here when that goes in there. Now I do have a lot of little pieces that will act as the isolators. Now obviously I'm not going to be super realistic here. I'm not going for super realism. I've quite simply got um, two little pieces. Oops, hello, if I can pick them up without picking them across the room. I've got two little pieces to act as the rear isolators. They'll just go along here somewhere. They're not gonna be super accurate in the position. They're not gonna be like anywhere delicate, but they're gonna go on the back. And that's just a little piece of the uh, mounting bracket for a 50 cal uh, gun on a striker. Yeah, 135th trumpeter striker. So there you go, now you know what that is. Got two of those. I have this piece here which uh, is, I think, again, part of a mounting bracket from a 135th striker, I think. And that's gonna be, in reality, the isolator on the front here is like a little Y-shaped thing. I, I couldn't find anything to act like that. So what I'm gonna do on here is just fudge it a bit and have that somewhere, maybe like this, or perhaps that way up. I don't know yet. It's not, I say, it's not gonna be accurate. It's not gonna be an accurate rendition. It's just a, a, a facsimile. We'll have it something like that maybe i don't know yet we'll, we'll figure it out and that'll go in here for the antenna wire uh, but what one last thing i'll do because what we'll do here is we'll leave this show here now this episode will be just about done in the next episode we'll crack on with the actual antenna wire itself now one last step i want to do is get the periscopes in so i don't want to glue these in permanently these are going to be removable but I want to get them set up. If you look at the periscopes, I don't know if it'll come out on camera, but each one does have a front. There's like a little lens there and these do rotate. This is a separate piece, it goes up and down. So what I want to do is get these in place and get them set so I know the right heights because what I'm gonna hopefully do is set these up so that they have tonnage pennants on them. So we're gonna get those in. This one at the back, they've kind of, cobbled together the uh, the actual 
deck part here. There's a lot of bits missing on this on this model, but it's not the end of the world. So we'll have that one there. We'll have this one here. Like I say, my aim is not to glue these into place on the tower. My aim is just simply to glue these into place to themselves. So we'll just turn this one around a little bit. And we'll turn that one around a little bit. So I've got them at the right heights. So what we'll hopefully have is tonnage pennant string will go from there to there and then down to the back. Because what they used to do was they weren't the tonnage pennants weren't there permanently. The, the, the submariners would just tie a piece of rope around there. They'd get the periscopes up, tie the rope around and put it up and tie it around there. So when it comes to doing those, I can just get the easy line and wrap it around because that's what they used to do. So what I shall do now is I will, I'll glue this in place here. So it just sets the height. And I do the same on this one, just so it locks the actual periscope in position. But they're not glued into the tower. So I'll take those out later on. Once everything else is dried, I'll take those out because it's gonna, with those in place, it's gonna be a pain in the bum to try and paint the back there. Without those in place, you've still got the gun, but it'll be all right. I just need to push this up because that's drooped a little bit, some droopy droopy. That one's drooped up. Oh, somehow this one's gone up a little bit. I don't quite know how. There we go. So they should dry. So I'm going to put all this to one side now. And leave all that to dry. So that's going to do it for this episode. For this first episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Just a little bit of silly fun getting this built. In the next episode we will look at properly. Properly doing the uh, antenna wire. Which I am dreading. Because when I was doing my 170 second scale 7C U boat, that gave me nightmares. I'm trying to plan it out ahead. And it's giving me nightmares now, even though it's a silly fun build. So I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. So we'll figure it out. But that's going to do it for this program. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, of course, everything I've used, uh, most of the stuff I've used, I should say, apart from one or two tools, is available from emodels.co.uk, my channel sponsors and the people for whom I am making this video. So do pop along to emodels.co.uk and check out everything if you're interested in this kit. They've got lots of others. They've got lots of the sort of chibi battleships and chibi fighter planes and all kinds of helicopters and stuff like that. And there's just lots of other good models and goodness. So do go and check them out. Uh, one little thing of note, do be aware, if you didn't know, eModels now do stock, thank you to Ravel, they now stock Star Wars, Bandai Star Wars kits. So if you've had your eye on some of the Bandai Star Wars kits and you've been waiting, especially if you're in the UK or Europe, you've been waiting for someone to stock them, now they do, thanks to Ravel and their distribution agreement. So go and check them out if you've been waiting, you don't have to get them from Japan anymore. But until next time, it just remains for me to say, like I said, go and check out emodels.co.uk. They're an awesome place. Don't forget to pop over to their Facebook page as well, facebook.com forward slash emodels LTD. It's a brilliant little place. You post up your work. And don't forget, of course, every Monday night, 9 p.m., me, Chris and Ted do our emodels live stream. So do come along and watch that on the emodels YouTube channel. But until next time, it remains for me to say thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go do something awesome. Go be awesome. You there. Go be awesome. And until next time. Adios, amoebas.